vote. Let's call the meeting to order at 5 p.m. This is the meeting of the Configuration Committee. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being, making time to be here. We have a few people online and uh, waiting for a couple of our board members that are going to join remotely. Here's one of them. Okay. Uh, Alicia couldn't be with us today, who's part of our committee, uh, too. Um, and Michaela can't be here today, uh, but she's coming a little later for our meeting. Uh, Diane uh, is going to try to join us online. Here she is. And Julia is online, too. Okay. So the first part is the discussion on the configuration next steps. So I was wondering if we should start by doing like a quick debrief of the, of the meeting and for people online or that are not familiar with we, what happened, we, we put a post on Front Porch Forum, but as you know, the Washington Central Unified School District decided not to move forward with the configuration proposal at our last meeting. So our hope is to, in this meeting today, hopefully to have a shared understanding and an agreed upon reality or where we stand today while we remain fully committed. That's part of the reason you get the strategic plan. Uh, while we remain fully committed to our strategic plan. So if you look at page uh, nine, thank you, Stephen. Uh, you can see goal three is a foster commitment to responsible leadership that engages the community and communicates transparently. Uh, Julie and Diane, you can, if you go into the website, just like right there, the configuration, the, sorry, the strategic plan is right, pretty easy to access, and I can put the link if you need me. So uh, we would continue uh, to work towards that financially sustainable configuration that aligns with our curriculum and moves us towards a financially sustainable configuration that aligns, sorry, I'm repeating that, with our curriculum and our cultural goals and strengthens the connection between families, students, and communities. So if you see to at least you know some of the action steps. I'm not trying to bring all of the action steps into it, but the first one is leaders will propose a financial sustainable configuration that plans and supports the curriculum and the culture goals. So the configuration study committee is meeting today for members of the public and to explore our next steps while also recognizing that we need to focus on budgeting and the district operations too. So uh, I Becca. Oh, yes. So, so Stephen it was part, and as a committee, we can uh, appoint. Becca, as, uh, as you know, please, Becca, join. Whatever. That's all I actually want. <laughs> 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 it's well at the table. table. <laughs> so, as part of the configuration committee, when it's formed, we have. But hopefully, you can still hear me. So it, we had a principal, we, we have a principal for elementary school and the principal of the high school join us. And so Stephen was that person before, but now he is our superintendent, so we can have double role. So we invited Becca to join us uh, so that we have a full committee. And like I said, Alicia was able to join us uh, today. Okay, so with that, I was just going to open a, a debriefing. Sorry, Chris, that you missed that part. Spencer's <laughs> Take it off. Okay. A little lower. There? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Everybody. So is that sort of muddy clear. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody, can we agree that we want to move towards our strategic plan goal? Move it up yes. just a little bit. Move it up just a little bit. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Who is the elementary school principal? Alicia Lyford. Thank you. Yeah. And she's been with us at all the meetings. Just She had a personal commitment today. Great. Thank you. 
Yeah. So I was just going to open it up. I think it's important also that we debrief so that I was just sort of trying to explain to the community where we were, but I also see it's important that we debrief and then the next step would be for us to look at the strategic plan, our parameters and our criteria. Diane, you have your hand up, please. So now I've opened up the um, document. What page again were you referencing? It, page nine. Oops, oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't. Yeah, you're really low uh, with the people online. Thank you, Diane. So any other thoughts? We don't also have to go one by one debriefing. It's just if you guys had something to say that was on set either in the post or, or right now or any thoughts. We had a time to reflect after the meeting, obviously, but mm -hmm. as we move forward, I want to use the time of the committee as efficient as possible to move us forward, and also with the understanding that our leadership team and our superintendent also has to help us with the budget and, and operations. So it almost feels like this work sort of falls into that. And I don't know, Stephen, if you want to say anything on that regard. But I just feel like, you know, our work sort of blends now with them. It's just like we would continue to have a configuration committee, which is an expanded committee of the finance committee, mm -hmm. and have and have input as we move forward. Because you missed this part, Chris, but what we were talking about was <laughs> if you have, there's a document for a strategic plan and just our commitment to, to that goal here. <coughs> that leaders will propose a financial sustainable configuration plan that supports the configuration, the curriculum and the culture goals. So okay. looking at those action steps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Should we look at our, if there's nobody that wants to make a, go ahead, Daniel. I, I just have a couple thoughts. Um, one is that, I, I mean, I think one thing that was clear to me through that process that we just went through, let's call it cycle number one of reconfiguration study, was the, the importance of having a very clear charge for this committee from the get-go. And I, I think I, I'll speak for myself, I thought it was clear what our charge was the first time around, but I think when, when it was closely interrogated by the public, the very interested public, it was hard to sort of create a, a clear list, sort of a hierarchy of what the priorities were. You know, was it a financial priority first and foremost? Was it an efficiency priority first and foremost? Was it uh, an educational equity priority first and foremost? And so I think for this committee, we need to have our ducks in a row in a very clear sense if we're, if we're gonna go through this process again. And I would like to go through the process again myself. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that came up was um, the history of our Act 46 consolidation. And I think it, as, a, as, a, as a, an act of good faith, I think it would be useful for the district to talk about the history the last five years and what consolidation has done for this district so far. Um, understanding that there was a lot of ambivalence about that, but that, you know, here we are and what have we accomplished because we're a consolidated district to this point? And then differentiate or take off from there what, what a configuration adds to or extends in terms of the strength of our sort of consolidated form. I guess those are two things that I would want to emphasize. Um, and then not in terms of reconfiguring schools, but in terms of the way we deliver services and specifically um, food service. I'd, I'd like to, like, I don't know if this is the appropriate, for, you know, forum to talk about that, but talk about, like, are there, are there cost savings opportunities for reconfiguring sort of how we, how we approach food service? And can there be 
more coordination among our, our food service directors and can we save money and also provide a better product? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that would be part of our budgeting conversations. And so, so yeah, and you're on the finance committee, so it can expand mm -hmm. to us. I was, I was hoping that we could have those shared understandings of, of, of where we are, right? So one shared understanding would be like the question that you're asking, Daniel, you know, what is our, what is our charge, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, where, and we came up through that process of uh, having a, what are our agreed, a, not just the strategic plan, but our core beliefs. We use the strategic plan and the core beliefs to create that criteria. So does the criteria still, you know, I'm, I'm hoping the criteria still stands. We did a lot of work as a committee. And, and that would be one possible, to start, you know, I, I have several questions for the committee, but I first want to make sure that everybody has a chance to, to share if they have thoughts, like Daniel just did. But then I have like a, maybe five questions, and uh, Becca and, and Stephen, you guys are full members of the committee, Michelle, too, and yeah. you know, and so please <laughs> like, speak up, uh, too. But by the way, if there's nothing to say right now. Oh, go ahead. I think we've sort of come to one, you know, you know, one stopping point as a board, but I think there's also, the board is not the only actor here. You know, we could also see citizen action you know, on this. And I think that I, I think that this committee needs to also keep keep the ball rolling to keep thinking about how do we reconfigure if we do, you know, if we do see a change to the Articles of Agreement that's citizen driven. Um, and if we, you know, and do we are there things that we need to be prepared for, you know, if, you know, in, in that event? Um, and I don't know the, time, the timeline on that. I don't know if that's really thinking, keep, you know, continue to think for, for next year or when that is. But I think that's a thing that we have to, you have to be serious about and have to, you have to include as part of our planning. Mm -hmm. So if we go, I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna leave the charge to last like I think if I ask some questions, maybe we can get again to, and I'm trying to look through my documents where, because we did have a charge, but I'm trying to find it. Mm -hmm. so, if, so the questions that I have in my, I need to find my glasses, sorry guys. If, so, if, okay, so the first one was, can we agree that the criteria stands? Thumbs up. I don't think that we need a motion, but at least Looking at people online too, could you give me a thumbs up if the criteria stands? So is this the criteria that we most recently agreed to? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. So I, I think, just to be clear, the draft criteria that we used for the configuration right. meeting, not the parameters that we had for the budget process. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. That's right. Yes. right. Yes. That, that was somewhat modified yeah. recently. That's, yeah. that's, and that's why. Go the no, no. I, yes. Right? Yeah. Right. Right, okay, so that, that, that work, that work stands. Um, okay, this is, can, can we agree that the budget is, uh, the budget conversation that we're gonna have, we are in a stressful time yeah. for, for budgeting, and uh, you know, we all are gonna play a role in, easing that process, and by easing I don't mean not ask questions, but that we, from now on, we're moving sort of hand in hand configuration and budgeting through this process, right? It doesn't mean that we're gonna change the, you know, we're not, you know, it doesn't mean that we're talking about changing, uh, closing schools right now or stuff like that, but the conversation is fluid, right? We're agreeing in that criteria, so the administrators can use that criteria and our parameters as they're budgeting for us, everything that criteria stands. And I'll ask the budget parameters. But can we agree that our financial, because that's a question that comes up a lot, right? We did not start this process just because we wanted to save money. We started this process just truly for student outcomes, right? And as we started to move through the process, and, and we can, you know, it, I, we don't need to have full, which is the beauty of being on a board, right? We don't necessarily be in full agreement, you know, because there's the, for different people, there were different truths to 
to that. But we can agree now that configuration is an integral part of budgeting too, because that's one, you know, it's one of the tools that we have in order to. So let me ask clarify thing. Yeah. So by saying that, are you meaning shifting potentially shifting students, um, and, and just leaving one grade open in a school? Not closing it, so it wouldn't qualify for closing under articles, but are you talking about saying that budgeting for this year is going hand in hand with configuration, that configuration may mean consolidating grades? I just, just I because that came up before. Mm -hmm. and, and I, don't, I don't know what it means at the, mo at, at the moment. It's just like we are going to have to listen to the community. We as, as the leadership team also have to you know, understand where we are now, but maybe we have a two-year process to get to where we need to be, right? I, d I don't know what that what that is right now, but we need to be flexible enough. I'm not saying just one grade, in because that is our articles of agreement. No, yeah. We would still, yeah, we would still need to approve that. We at least need to stand by our articles of agreement, right? And, and we know that possibly what you're saying might be a no for most of our community, right? So we also have to take that into consideration. So what are you, what would you like to say or what is what I'm just looking for is clarity and transparency if that is if that's what you mean by um, walking hand in hand budget budgeting and reconfiguration walking hand in hand through this process uh, and the potential is that yes if we move these grades over these three grades over to this school um, essentially combining those schools for those grades that will save money if that's what you mean we should be blunt about that so I think that we need to pay attention to the fact that configuration, when we approached it, was about student outcomes and not just financial savings, despite some people's focus. So when we talk about this, we've been talking for two years now about changing our configuration to address some of our financial needs and student needs. So we can find a way to meet our student needs in a better way that's what we're asking for in the strategic plan. Like the first action step for goal three is that the leaders of the Washington Central UUSD is gonna propose a financially sustainable configuration plan that supports our curriculum and culture goals. We're looking to improve our students' outcomes. And if we're not able to do it in our current configuration with an efficient use of the tax dollars we can have, then we need to come up with something else. And we have been promising to do so for years. So I think we need to commit to doing that. I get that it's hard conversations and there are people in the public who do not like it, but that is not the resounding answer from everybody. We have heard both sides and we need to honor that too. Thank you. I was just gonna say, I, I'm taking Floor at her word. If she had meant what you're saying, she would have said what you're saying. I think, I think what she said was that we're looking through the lens of the budget at reconfiguration right now, and things are everything's on the table at this point. Uh, for me personally, like that scenario you described is, comes with really significant costs in terms of student outcome and community well-being, and I think we'll we'll look at everything through, you know, through these draft criteria. But I think I heard that everything is on the table, and it's we're just using the budget as the lens through which we look at configuration. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think I think of con re or configuration, however you want to word it, as a tool for the district to be able to be creative and really think outside the box, because at the end of the day, it is going to take thinking outside of the box to be able to be financially sustainable long-term, especially with what we're dealing with. So I am in support of having any conversation we need to have and looking at all the tools you all have in regards to the budget and supporting those and having a dialogue and figuring out if that is going to fit the community's needs and our financial needs as well. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that um, the leadership team has talked about um, is the need for articulating the real framework for what we're, how we're doing instruction, how we're doing interventions, um, how we're doing our special education practices and look at this not as much through the lens of the dollars, but the instructional programs. I mean, we heard that loud and clear across the, um, the time. And so w our goal 
in presenting the budget, and we'll talk more about this in the, in the full meeting when everybody's here, but our goal in presenting the budget is to help the board connect the programs to the dollars mm -hmm. and, to per, and to understand where's the discretionary versus the non-discretionary funds. Mm -hmm. um, and those will be both uh, dollars that we talk about, there'll be time that we talk about, there'll be locations that we talk about, um, depending on which one of these scenarios and how we're talking about the instruction or the interventions or those kinds of pieces as well. I, I think, and, and as a little preview for what comes in the board meeting around the budget, is that's what's making it a little more difficult for us to put this budget together as quickly as we had hoped to do it, is just getting the more comprehensive view of those things that we've been asked for from both the public and the board. Anybody else who wants to share something right now? Go ahead, Chris, oh, okay, Michelle. Yeah. Um. I agree that nothing, I feel like I've thought long and hard since the last meeting. I don't feel with the incoming budget that anything is off the table. Like, we, we need to be responsible. We need to look at our student outcomes. We need to look at ev everything across the board. And I, I truly feel nothing is off the table because I think we're in for another very hard, hard budget season again. My, my primary point is that we went through a pretty grueling process um, recently, uh, and there, there's strong, as we understood and knew, strong attachment between the community and the local school. Um, and if we're going to do some type of reconfiguration, we should call it what it is as opposed to some camouflage thing because the because we want the community, we want the community on our side. I think we, what we didn't do enough of is saying, this is a good reason to close the school, um, when we know how difficult it is for a community to close the school because they're basically cutting out their heart in a way, uh, and it really is that strong a connection. So if we're going to do this, we should be very blunt and and clear-eyed about it, clear in terms of communicating with our community as opposed to bringing it up at the last, you know, last minute. I mean, because I, I think it will be, it will be a backlash and, and not well, not well received. So again, I understand everything's on the table, meaning everything, um, but we should be clear about what we're seriously considering. Um, yeah, for, and, and we won't know that for a little while, I think yeah. we just want to make sure it's up there. Yeah. But, no, but, but I, uh, I do want to get to some agreed upon realities and groom, like, because I think it would help. It would help the board, you know, it's just, it, it would help the board and it would help the public. So, you know, we are, we are all agreeing in, in the, this, just in this past 10 minutes or whatever, we're, we're all agreeing that we're going to continue to work towards the goal of the strategic plan mm -hmm. with, with those two bullets. We're all agreeing that everything is on the table right now as we move as we move forward that doesn't mean that it's going to happen tomorrow so don't no, get me wrong but everything is uh, is uh, is on the table and then we are agreeing that the criteria stands the work of the committee and and I'm still looking for the charge but i think with all of this we can get even to a refrain charge anything else I Ursula? Want to say something i yeah. think and i think daniel has said it in past meetings zach may have brought it up in past meetings we have a responsibility as the board, and even you, Chris, just now said that we have a responsibility in how we discuss these options and why they're beneficial. So we need to be mindful, all of us, of the language we are using and whether we are choosing words that are insightful or helpful. And so I think that when we, when we ask very like pointed questions, like, are you looking to do this? It's kind of accusatory in a way. I, I understand you're trying to get to the truth and the bottom of the truth, and we've all said everything is on the table, and it's something that we're going to have to discuss for the well-being of the whole entire system. But I do think that we need to start talking about the positive benefits that our students could seek, which have been presented to us. But there has been a large focus on the negatives, including members of the board, and so we haven't all been presenting the positives. And I think that we need to work towards that. And that is something you just said. And I agree with you, but it's a balance too. We cannot ignore the impact that we are um, asking towns to visit upon themselves for the, potentially the betterment of the whole. And, and to say that 
there's not going to be significant sacrifice being requested. I, I, just let me finish, please. Okay. Ignores, yep. I think, what the the connection the community has, and and I think we have to address that and acknowledge it. Because I think we spent a lot of time acknowledging that. You know, I don't think directly to be blunt. Anyway, we should we should move on. But I agree with you on the language. I think one way to bring that sort of conversation to a close, because I think that we are all kind of saying the same thing on on that. I don't think that Ursula is trying to say that she just didn't care or understand the, the hurt to the community, right? But wait, but that I think what we all, we, we're just agreeing upon our reality right now, how as a committee, how we would stand together and understand the charge so we can connect all the dots as we move ahead, because I think that was part of the challenge too, was for us to not be able to connect the dots of you know what was shared in budgeting season, mm -hmm. how do we, the strategic plan, the core, like being able, we have to do a, a better job about connecting the dots. We had started putting every document in the agenda that that maybe you know, was not part of that agenda, but putting every document so that people can visit that, that agenda. But a way to address what you were saying, and we don't have it in here, we had an, a third column. We had added a third column with, with strategies. 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 And, 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 and we'll address that. Absolutely, we want the community to feel connected. Like there's ways to get there, but if we can plan of what it is, then we can plan for how we would, you know, rename schools. And right now, it's, we don't even need to talk today in this meeting about how we are going to rename schools. We need to address that we care deeply. Mm -hmm. That if anything that is going to impact the communities, we, we heard loud and clear. If you're going to move the sixth graders, please make sure to tell them ahead of time. Like there's things that that, that we know that will help and ease. And I think that Stephen and his team are planning it, like any transition or anything like that. But right now we need to agree that we want to continue to do this work, that we're going to stand by the strategic plan, that we're going to let the administrators use the criteria and our budget parameters. I put the budget parameters for the board because I think it's the place for the parameters to be. And we, as a, an expanded finance committee, can can look at that. I do want to say that, you know, a lot of the time gets thrown as like, you know, is, is Floor saying that? Floor, I, I have no more power, and I've made this clear over the years when I've been here. Like we created a strategic, a steering committee, so that everybody had a seat at the table. You know, like everybody can contribute and change things if you want a different protocol, if you want something changed, just please communicate. You know, I, I, I try to create the space and hold space for these conversations to happen and, and, and guide them, but it is, not a, it is not because I say, or it's not because Steven say, it's the will of the board, right? As was very evident mm -hmm. at our last minute. So we all stand behind that decision. How do we best move forward so we can continue this work and we can not just create the configuration and sort of operationalize our our plants that we've been wanting to do for a while and also have a budget that passes. I can find, a, I, I'm sure I can find, I can find a couple of emails. Of can, can I just ask one other um, thing from the, from the administration's perspective too is that as we move further down the road towards uh, making a decision about configuration, it was, um, it seemed to be more of this is administration's uh, proposal that we were bringing and th it, was a it was a question from the configuration committee that led to that. And so I just wanna make clear that administration isn't necessarily proposing these, but working with the board and the community to come up with these configurations. We presented information that was requested of us by this committee, but it, it started moving towards it being a, here's administration's proposal. And I just want us to be careful of that mm -hmm. because that administration's goal is it wasn't the proposal, it was the committee's um, request to bring that information forward. And I just, as we go through the process, I don't want us to create that fork in the road where it's the board and administration, we're working together on this same piece. Mm -hmm. And I don't want us to have that, that kind of feeling uh, towards the end of it that we're proposing it. We were asked yeah. to, and, 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 we're, and we're a part of the committee, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. 
And, and I think the timeline also would be important. Right now, we're not going to have a timeline. You know, I, I want to make clear because it was not, seemed not clear at our last meeting, right? Like we, we had said originally we were going to make a decision in June. Then we moved it. We heard from the community. We added some community meetings, and we moved it towards uh, September. And then we said we need a little more time. We moved it towards October. So we would, we would, we would do our best. You know, I'm. To make sure that community continues to be informed, find more creative ways to engage with the community, but this work can't wait or can't come to a halt, right? No. We will continue, and we are all agreeing on that, right? Yep. Okay. And we don't have a, a Diane had to to leave, so we don't have other. Julia is online. Uh, Ju Julia is online. Yeah. If you had anything to say, Julia, you can say. I know that you're not in this committee, but you're a member of the board, so you can express yourself if there's something that you would want thanks, to share. Thanks, Laura. Nothing, there's nothing right now. Thank you. Okay. Daniel. Um, a, couple, a couple other things. I don't know if we are on future agenda items or like a, 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 an action plan of a kind for this board or for this committee, but I was hoping to bring up a few sort of dimensions of what I'd like us to be talking about in, in this space? Yes, so that's where I, I wanted people to have a shared understanding of where we are, yeah. have some shared agreements of where we are, and then move towards it, not just future agenda items, but next next steps, right? We, we have to decide on when are we gonna meet. And we continue to do it right before the, the board meeting, we do it the Monday before, we can you know, send a, a Google Doc. But yes, this is a good time to brainstorm yeah, different things. OK, well, um, I mean, one thing that c continued to come up over and over again, and I think this is the appropriate place for the board to be maintaining the conversation, is the development of this concept of working with another district and potentially merging with another district. Mm -hmm. I think this committee is the place for that yep. work to develop. Another thing is um, if we come back to, the, to the, a configuration that includes closing schools, uh, I think developing a specific uh, pl plan for transition before, like much, for, much further, much sooner than, um, than we contemplated doing it the first time, because I think there was a lack of a positive vision the first time around, and I think explaining and describing to people what we are envisioning is a big piece of making it a positive thing. Um, and then the two, two other things in terms of like the work of, the com of this committee and the work of the board, I think we could be supported by some external partners, either community members um, serving on this committee or um, some kind of third party. Um, and I, th I think we have to be careful about how we incorporate a third party. But uh, at least in terms of sort of double checking our budgetary assumptions around like a school closure, it felt like the community was either choosing to take our word for it or choosing not to take our word for it. Mm -hmm. But I think a third party who says, well, looking at, at what this proposal is and the framework of this proposal and the assumptions built into this proposal, these are all reasonable assumptions. And I think that's an important sort of validation and legitimate, legitimation of, um, of the work that we would do when we're modeling something like a school closure. So I think we, we should consider it seriously the next time around if we do it. That, that all sounds good. The, we do have great schools partnerships helping us with, uh, you know, and that's part but of that. Their they're role more was facilitation. And engagement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, facilitation yeah. and engagement. And we'll continue that. I'm going to, you know, like we have to be smart about our resources. I think the first step towards what you're, what you're suggesting, Daniel, might be to. <coughs> bring forward, which Stephen had brought forward before, uh, but let's bring, maybe give all of the documents that we have made over the years, because I, I'll be a little worried about creating another efficiency study 
I'm looking at you, uh, 2014, you know, another efficiency study. Oh, yeah. And and yeah. just saying, and, and then it's just like, oh, they're, you know, another efficiency study that nobody wants to, you know, even, no matter who, who presents it. So, uh, so making sure that we bring all the, I actually brought my big binder today, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, it is not the first time that we would have created, uh, hire somebody to look at that, look at numbers, look at, you know, and we check the boxes of a lot of like the efficiency study one, and we did not finish uh, checking all the boxes on the efficiency study part two. So I think as just as being careful with our resources, let's, let's bring all that data back again and maybe <clears throat> try to synthesize that data in a way that is more comprehensive mm -hmm. for not, not like spell it out for everybody. So I'm like, everybody can have the raw data. Don't get me wrong because I know I've gotten in trouble for that before. But like, you know, we can't all read hundreds of pages, right? So mm -hmm. it would be it would be nice to so so maybe it's a combination of finding somebody that can go through some existing and I don't know, I'm looking at you guys. <laughs> I'm just wondering if like having an online repository of all of the data, including the efficiency study, including everything that we presented this year, um, and sort of having it online so it's accessible to anybody who can get to it, and potentially creating an index or keyword tags for different documents so that people can search for specific things that they want, right? Like, yeah. um, I'm just thinking ways to allow people to efficiently move through that data because it's a lot. And, and maybe it could be somebody that has helped us before, you know, like, you know, when, I don't know, when, one of the names that jumps into my head right now is uh, Mike DeWeese that helped us with Superintendent Search, but he also, if I'm not wrong, he was one of the people that worked on the, yes. on the he, he was the one that worked. One he of the analysis. efficiency studies. He, yeah. yeah, one of the efficiency studies. So, so bringing somebody that, you know, that knows the, the, the district could be, and that it could be a short, I don't know, I'm just brainstorming with you guys. So we'll put that in the future agenda items, so definitely yeah, do. But I, I think we made some, we made some progress, and now I think we could, between all of us, I'm having a hard time finding the charge, but between all of us, we could maybe refrain, you know, this is where we are right now, our, our charge can read you what the little things that I was able to find, but I'm not able to find the charge unless somebody else can. I almost texted Kari, but I behave myself. Yeah, hold on. Ursula, were you gonna say something? Mm -hmm. No, no, Zach, it was. Um, th this is something that came, it was, was not for me, it came from a conversation I had last week, and it builds on something that Daniel said at the beginning. I, I think it'd be valuable for us to sort of try, you know, th thinking about some of the other ideas about also looking at consolidating with other districts in the area, to set out a larger vision of like what that would look like, you know, and to, to be able to present more of, you know, what you know, if we were to combine with Montpelier, what would that look like as a district? Um, to sort of say what you know, what does it look like as central office? What does it look like as a high school? But also, what does that mean for how a combined six you know, or seven town district would would also deal with its elementary schools? Um, to, to, to provide that as more of a as, as a comprehensive vision, so it wasn't so much, so it didn't feel as much of like a this or that, which I feel like we got into a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would also go into building um, multiple steps, like immediate steps, midterm steps, mm -hmm. long term steps, and what do we need to do to put ourselves in a position to be able to merge. Mm -hmm. And all the yeah, all the operational challenges <laughs> that that it would present for both 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 districts and all schools, yeah. yeah. Stephen, would there be an optimal time for that to happen, given given contracts, staffing contracts? It doesn't I, matter. I don't think there's an optimal time. It's going to it would take years of work for us to do that process. We just. If anything, we just need to have the boards meet, talk about what the process is, and decide whether or not they want to move forward with an exploration of it. I mean, it's pretty well spelled out. It's the process. It takes time, and and even if we decided to merge, there would still be time beyond that where it would take to be able to actually merge two high schools is a big deal from separate mm -hmm. districts. Yeah. yeah, 
yeah. yeah, just think about you were part of that process too. Chris, right. you know, so it would it would take us about, and we have had informal conversations with them, and both districts have been trying to find time to bring both leadership team and their, uh, you know, and to 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 talk about what what it would mean for the district because it's not just us talking about it. The amount of work that it means to have a configuration committee for their leadership teams and their business administrators is significant, right? So it's not just. It's not just governance. So one part is governance, right? So we would have to move to a different governance, as you all know. So have either have representation all. You know. So yeah, it will be an involved process, but absolutely, we don't need to continue to. Uh, we we need to do it. We can't continue to stall in that process. The hope was that we were going to be in a different position. That's what Montpelier was waiting, right? They were doing their process. We were going to do our process, and then we were going to come together. And we just we didn't finish our process until last meeting, right? So, so absolutely. We should still come together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as far as meeting, uh, should we continue to 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 meet uh, before each meeting? And sometimes not enough time for for them to be changes. There's the finance committee meeting, but the configuration meeting. We added this meeting today because it felt like it would be the easiest way to get everybody, because getting a doodle fall, believe me or not, is I, hard. I mean, my, my, the finance committee is gonna be pretty busy over the next couple of months, and so I think you might want to start when we get the budget draft to you before you say, here's how much more configuration time we want to add into it, um, would be my suggestion. It's just, we're going to have a lot of discussions of the Finance Committee. <laughs> I think that if we're looking for administration to ever make any changes to information that they've brought to us, um, having it the same night as a meeting puts us like two weeks behind on getting like any new information or revised information, whereas when we were doing it Mondays, it was tight. Yeah, yeah. it was really tight. I'm I don't assuming appreciate you guys. A week as okay. Opposed to a day. Just, just asking for a friend. Four hours. <laughs> okay, so so let's look at potential times for us to meet. I think it would still be beneficial, Stephen, to continue to have the configuration, even even if we have the configuration committee bef before the meeting, because see it as ambassadors of the budget mm -hmm. too, because there, there's more more people at the table that would be able to, to even if it's before the, if, if, even if that's the only time where the configuration committee can meet, uh, we can we can brainstorm it so it's not just on the finance, because the, the part mm -hmm. of why we expanded the, the finance committee was, uh, I'm still, I, I will have the charge for the next meeting, I just can't like look at the computer, look at you guys and I'm not having a hard time finding it. I'm pretty sure it's just in the presentation where we put it with Megan, but yeah, I'll find it. Yeah. Oops, that was me, Spencer, sorry. I was like touching it. I was like, yeah. I can't believe that. It almost seems like we might be done a little bit earlier, but public comment. Do we need to do future agenda items? Well, that's what we were doing right now. I thought it we was were like doing a combination. action steps, next steps. We combined them. We combined, oh, did we combine them. them. Is that okay? I that's took fine. Notes. I caught up now. But did it's fine. you forget something? I'm looking. No. Michelle, good. I'm good. Becca, you're good. Ursula, good. I'm Steven. good. Oh, I'm good. Daniel, Zach. We've already talked a bunch. Elizabeth. Yep. Mr. Chris. Yep. Absolutely. Thumbs up. Absolutely. Daniel's not. Okay, go, Daniel. <laughs> I just like, something occurred to me. I was gonna say before what you said, Floor was. So for me, intuitively, this should be a separate thing from the finance committee. But then I heard when you were talking about scheduling, the importance of this being uh, a room where we can have sort of pre-conversations about the budget, and so that keeps it sort of squarely financial in, in sort of the, in the terms of the conversation. I guess I'm still confused about the utility of calling this the Finance Configuration Committee instead of just the Configuration Committee and being, having it be sort of an open, anyone on the board can join the Configuration Committee and it's its own thing as opposed to this different 
configuration, if you will, of the of the finance committee. Like it's a different thing, right? I mean, yeah, but it's, it's completely attached to our budget where we, we want it or not, and this committee is so cares about student. If you look at the entire criteria, I don't know that we can differentiate. Well, I, yeah, I mean, that's I look at the criteria, and that's the grounds on which I think of it as a as a distinct thing. Yeah. It's not. It's it's not just. It doesn't just touch on finance. It touches on sort on of every aspect mm -hmm. of the board's work, and so to me, that's it's a different committee, and mm -hmm. just it's just its own distinct thing. It's okay. a it's a semantic argument, but it's one worth well, having. I, I, I don't disagree that it's a it's, that it's a different thing, but it informs the budget. You know, like I, in in my mind, we see the budget through all those lenses of the criteria because that's why we're giving them the mm -hmm. criteria from the configuration committee. So it's. I, I agree, it's semantics, but so we better work at the charge together. Okay. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Elizabeth. I was going to say something similar to Daniel, um, because I think when I, you know, I went home and reflected on that night, that night at Callis, um, and a few things stuck out for me. The first one was that. Um, I had people approach me afterwards at different times and say, it wasn't just about finances. And I said, I hear you, I understand. Um, and they talked to me about like the various things that we've heard from the public multiple times. Um, and so I do think that semantics is really important because tying the two together does send a message that that is the main focus. And I know that's not intentional and I know that they are dependent upon one another. But I also think that if our charge is not just finances, which I'm hearing you say, I'm hearing you say it's tied to student outcomes, then we've got to find a way to communicate that because a lot of the community's feedback was, you're not saving that much money. It's however much per person or whatever it was. And there was so much more to it, but that's what they were hearing. And that's why I think semantics and optics and the way in which we're communicating things is really, really important. And so I would second what, what Daniel says. And I don't know what that looks like. And I'm not even a member of the Finance Configuration Committee. But I do think as somebody who sat back and kind of reflect on the, reflected on it, I think there's a lot of really good information the community gave to us about how they understood it. And that we've got to be able to dissect a little bit. I'm open to anything. I think yeah. it's semantics and it gets ridiculous. I think the reason it got tacked to finance is because we started with the group of people that were in finance committee instead of putting it on the steering committee or another one and adding people. We used finance as a baseline and then added people to ensure that we had representation from both towns. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that it was like a let's use finance because it's yeah. closely linked with finance. It was. These are the people that already meet together, mm -hmm. and now they can meet together more because sure. we love each other. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and, sure. And, adding, and, and adding, you know, adding the two, the two principles. The idea was that you know, like having a set number of people also, so that you could convene and mm -hmm. send a doodle poll. Like you know, like I was saying, like it's really hard to get 15 people to respond to a doodle poll. Yeah. I know that it doesn't sound that complicated. It is really hard, and yeah. and we all have lives. We all have. And so the idea was to. You know, I can. totally get why it happened. Like I, that's probably my that would be my own natural selection of how I would do it as well. Um, but I also think that there's lots of brains in the community yeah. Yeah. that are saying something different, and we've got to respond to that. And I don't know what that looks like quite yet, but I think that response is going to speak volumes in our ability to move forward in the process. Thank you. We also so presented it as a money-saving effort. I mean, that was front and center for a very long time. Uh, and you know, when we had public comments, the question was a lot of the questions was how much will this save um, off the budget? So I, you know, the impression that I think was a prominent one when we were moving into this was that it would save money. Um, and the and, and that, so I think we cannot ignore that that is one of the points that was being made about um, reconfiguring is that it would save money, and it, it then then it, it kind of shifted 
Um, and I think in, in our literature, we, we emphasize that, uh, that it would save money. So, you know, people get the impression because it was out there. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't yeah. unsaid many, many times. So it's, it's right to emphasize the other academic benefits, but that, that is also was a focus. I want to go back. You had something else that you were going to say. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that's. I think that's why we got to clarify our mm -hmm. charge, charge, right? Because yeah. I yeah. think it can be both, but we have to be clear about it being both. Or if mm -hmm. we're creating a hierarchy, which comes first? Yeah. And and the you know everything flows from there, including what we call the committee. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. I. Mm -hmm can't explain it better at the moment, but I do, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think that we need to, as an action step then, make sure that we're checking in as a committee and as a board as to the understanding of what's been presented to us and how we're presenting information out because I have an entirely different truth on how we were presenting the data in the beginning. It was not all cost driven. And so that was how I heard it. And so I think that if we as a board we just need to make sure we're checking in regularly throughout the process to make sure that we have an agreement on what we're hearing. And so it's that checking in to make sure you heard somebody correctly and that we're all in agreement on the information that's been given to us. And just to, so I didn't say all, but it was a prominent piece of what was presented, I believe, both verbally and literature. I want to make sure that we are, have time for public comments and we're coming upon just 10 minutes. But I also, all of those things that we said as agreed upon realities, especially that this committee will help with that, which is part of the board, we are all still on it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to open it to public comment. Please raise your hand if you are here and please raise your hand in the virtual world if you are in the virtual world. And I'll see how many people we have. And if we have too many, then we'll do time. If not, Erica, why don't you get started? I don't see anybody online with their hand up yet. Please introduce yourself and use the mic. There is nobody online. Nobody yet. online right now, so please go ahead. Hi, I'm Erica Zimmerman from East Montpelier. Um, I just want to encourage big thinking and not necessarily um, thinking that your next steps need to be small iterations from where you were a couple weeks ago. Um, there's definitely interest in the community in thinking big, as several of you have mentioned, not just thinking about taking uh, an iterative step from where you were. Um, if, if your charge is to think about configuration in a broad way, I think Regionalization is an important question. You can th look at housing issues in our country and the best ideas are coming from areas that are thinking regionally. Um, we're, there's regional mayors being created in parts of the country. We can certainly think about schools of small districts in more regional terms. And um, I'm not talking like a quarter of the state, you know, as you know, <laughs> we're a small region, but we're a region. Um, let's think that way. And on that note, I just, I, there's a lot more I could say, but I just, um, Daniel's question about food service, I think is a really good example of where when we came together as a district, more than, I mean, even before Act 46, we had brought together um, special education, hadn't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there were, you know, steps we had taken before to try to create efficiencies and not just cost, but quality. Um, I think food service is a really good example. In the past, and I may be talking decades in the past, when we brought this up, at the budget stage, it was too late once we are at the budget stage. So talking about it as soon as possible, um, it creates opportunities. Mm -hmm. I'll stop there for now. Thank you, Erica. Okay, online, one last chance. Wow, I don't see any hands up. Okay. So, with that, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you, Ursula and Chris. All of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 
Okay, we're adjourned. Can I